The other thing to consider is your user experience. Who are your users? Um, what do you your What do your users care about? Uh, what are their motivations? You know, what is their context when they're using this application? Um, is this something that they can spend time on? Is this something that they have to be in the middle of a busy situation where they're not going to be able to focus on it? Uh, what kind of information could they provide? What kind of information can you retrieve from them without them providing it so that you can provide the most accurate predictions and the best user experience? Uh, what is it that they are trying to accomplish? You know, and a good example is uh, the, the parking, at, you know, Am I going to find a parking space on this street? That's an interesting problem to solve. Your model may be able to predict whether or not there will be a parking space on a street, but uh, you know, users probably don't think about it in this way. They probably think I got to park somewhere near here. So you know, parking on a particular street may not actually be their goal. It may be I just need to find a good parking space somewhere near where I'm looking. So that may be you have to use multiple predictions. You have to use, or you have to apply multiple predictions for multiple locations. So this user experience may not just be using your model. I think if they, people sometimes forget in the software engineering world is that nobody wants to use machine learning who is, is you know, nobody, no user is thinking, oh, I got to use machine learning for this. Users think I have to solve this problem. I need a solution. And that's a very different thing. So when you start thinking about what your user needs, it changes the way you think about how your model fits into your application. Um, how do you employ your machine learning based on this context? And there are three things you should probably consider here. Uh, your training pipeline, your production pipeline, and how you actually provide those predictions. So we're going to talk about each one of these, but how do we actually go about the process of, of gathering input, curating our data, and training a model versus how do we actually host that model? Where does that model exist? What kind of hardware is it deployed on? Uh, you know, how do we actually service it? How do we make sure that all of the things we do for training are as close as possible, if not identical, to all the things we're doing when we're actually making predictions in, 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 in production? Uh, and then that last point is around how do we make sure that we are actually predicting in an effective way. So uh, as far as our training stack, how does your configuration and your training stack compare to your serving configuration? This basically is if we go off and we, we train on a particular machine or we use a you know particular hardware configuration or we use particular library configuration, can we reproduce that? You know, because one problem you find a lot in machine learning development is that some people will go build a model and then they never quite get the same results, even though they're using the same data. And that may be because of some of these different changes in their steps. You know, like a lot of times you want to keep track of all of the steps that went into building a model and training a model and using that model, uh, as well as the configuration, as well as the, the data, as well as, you know, the timing. All of these things may actually have an effect on how your model um, performs predictions. So being able to re reproduce that both in the training context as well as the production context is really important. You also have to think about how your model will be packaged. Uh, a lot of times, we may just take a model and we may use a host, you know, some model hosting service or a container to, to host uh, something, so some basic API so that we can send uh, data to the, send information parameters to that model and then get a prediction back. But we may not actually be packaging that way. We may have to deploy this onto some device. You know, this may be embedded in a, in a you know, a, a um, a board for a camera or something, you know, like we might actually be putting this onto hardware that is not at all similar to what we are actually using for training, in which case we really have to be careful in testing. So with our training pipeline, we're asking different questions than in our production pipeline. With training, we have to think about what data is available. We have to think about how we're processing that data, how we're transforming that data, how we're engineering features that are going to be inputs for that data. And we have to think about all of the hardware, the pipeline, you know, what is this process? How do we make it repeatable? And how do we evaluate a trained model? Um, with a production pipeline, we have to think about what those inputs are. Are those inputs something that the user is providing? Are there inputs that our application can retrieve and supply to the model? What do we actually need to give the model in order to get predictions? How do we pre-process pre those inputs? How do we normalize those inputs? How do we actually make sure they make sense? You know, when we train a model, maybe we're giving it uh, some kinds of data, and maybe when we run a, pr a prediction in production, we might need to scale that data in some way. We may need to modify that data so we get predictions that make sense. Again, the user doesn't care that you're using machine learning. They care that the application works. And the user doesn't care if you're modifying inputs. You know, they just want to get a, a prediction that makes sense. They want a machine learn, you know, they want your application to work in a way that works for them. Uh, so thinking about that prediction stack and what kind of hardware is there, how that's being hosted and managed, and anything else you might need to evaluate as part of the process of providing this information to your application and then to your users. You may have to do some post-processing after you get the prediction so that it actually makes sense to the users. So you, there's a lot of different things that might be necessary in order to really leverage uh, your machine learning predictions effectively.
Uh, Monica Rigotti, uh, she says, I think it's a building machine learning application or machine learning powered applications, talks about the impact bottleneck. So if you look at the, your process of, you know, finding data, labeling data, you know, transforming data, finding, you know, feature engineering, training your model, evaluating your model, comparing your model, uh, you know, putting your model in produ production, testing and evaluating your model in production, uh, maybe potentially going back to the beginning. What part of that process provides the most value if it's improved? That may not be the machine learning part. That may be other pieces of your application that are supporting your machine learning. Uh, so that may be faster data access. They may be scaling the uh, the the uh, containers that are managing your application as opposed to the containers that are managing machine learning. So there are a lot of different ways that you can improve your application. Some of those will be improving your model predictions. Some of them will not. Uh, and beyond your simple measures, you've got accuracy for your prediction. You know, what do you want your model to do? How do you know if it's effective? This is an important question to, to ask as you're developing because you don't know, you know, like, yeah, your model's accurate, but maybe it's only accurate in certain situations. That doesn't mean it's useless. It just means that maybe you need to put your model into situations where it's successful. Uh, and then how do you actually evaluate what your model does to make it useful? You know, for example, you could, you know, auto complete things that people are entering but you could also just suggest different options. And sometimes one of those is gonna be more effective than the other. So it's really about being able to pivot and react to what your model does so that you can effectively integrate it into your applications. You also have to consider the cost of bad advice. You know, social media suggestions, here are some connections, that's wrong, no big deal. Uh, but if you re recommend the wrong medical treatment to somebody, that could be a significant liability. So you have to think about, you know, a couple of things like what's the quality of your data here? How can you make sure that your data is accurate? And maybe you don't need to worry too much about those factors in certain applications or certain contexts. Maybe predictions are nice, you know, maybe they're not really imperative for your application, but maybe they're the centerpiece of your application. Maybe it's all your application does is, is really provide these predictions. So this is a good, this is a good question to be asking, like, what happens if I make bad predictions? What's really the cost of that? Uh, what's the value of making good predictions on the other side? Um, you might need to incorporate a confidence threshold to control the recommendations that your model makes. So, you know, maybe we're, we're, we're getting, uh, we're getting predictions, but maybe we're not suiting If we're just doing a binary classification, maybe we're not happy with a particular level of confidence. Maybe we just don't even provide that prediction. Or maybe we say we can't do anything with this particular input. It's okay to bail out. And it's often better to say, Hey, we don't have a good answer for you here than it is to provide a bad answer. Um, getting feedback on suggestions. We'll talk a little bit about this uh, in future um, future lessons, but you know, you might find that there are good ways for you to identify what the feedback on a suggestion is. There may be automated ways for you to do this. Uh, there may actually be other ways to do this that are that are valuable as well, like just seeing what your users do. How do they react to the, the prediction? Are they accepting it? And then the last point here, remember that your business needs shift, but also the world around you can shift. So how did your application change to meet those needs? Um, some applications are seasonal, some applications may, you know, like sometimes the world changes and, you know, we have different uh, costs or we have different inputs and we need to think about how all of the things that we're doing are going to need to change and, and be affected by those, those, uh, those qualities. The last point here is our online versus batch prediction. So one question to be asking is how quickly can we pre generate predictions? You know, so predictions may not actually come in a timely fashion, but maybe we don't need them to be done in, in a timely fashion either. Maybe we can pre uh, process all of these predictions and maybe it's actually cheaper to do it this way. So if we think about the cost here, because you know, when we're building applications for an enterprise, we need to think about what the cost is. Uh, What's the cost of each one? You know, what's the compute cost for making a prediction? Can we perform a batch prediction? A good example of this is, you know, when you go to amazon.com and you see product prediction or product recommendations, you don't have to wait for two minutes for those to come in. They're just there and they're probably being pre-computed. There probably is some batch process that's running all of these predictions and then providing them, you know, storing them in a database or something. So then when you access the page, you're not actually seeing a prediction, you're seeing a saved prediction from before. And that might actually be really effective for the user experience. So that's a lot to cover for how you build machine learning uh, focused applications. Hopefully this will give you an overview of, of what we're doing to, to actually build something here. Uh, and hopefully some of these questions will help you to on your own path to building something that is machine learning powered that makes sense and can be useful for your needs. Thank you for watching.